Hi, I'm Jeff McKay, Chairman of the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. I want to wish everyone in our community a Happy New Year. And as we enter 2023, I wanted to take some time to reflect on all the progress that we made as a community and by the board in 2022. This past year was a wonderful year for our county as we were able to accomplish so many of the goals we set out to achieve. As a community, we worked together to make our great county even greater. We continued to prioritize having one of the best education systems in the country, to build affordable housing in every corner of the county, to maintain our strong commitment to equity through our One Fairfax policy, to provide increased access to public transit, and to reform public safety practices while remaining one of the safest jurisdictions of our size. Our reputation as a fiscally sound county remained intact with a AAA bond rating despite all of the headwinds we faced post-pandemic. Economic development continued on pace as well, thanks in part to our board's commitment to helping small businesses grow here in Fairfax. We also made significant progress towards meeting our affordable housing goal. Fairfax County now has over 4,000 new affordable units either being built or in the pipeline, putting us well on our way to meeting our goal of 10,000 homes by 2034. Importantly, these units are being built around the county and not concentrated in one place. This is in service to our One Fairfax Equity Policy, which guides every decision we make. It is critical we keep our foot on the gas when it comes to affordable housing. We need the people who work in Fairfax County to be able to live in Fairfax County. We certainly saw that safe, affordable housing is a very important public health need during the pandemic. To talk about all the progress we are making to provide more affordable housing to our residents, we have the chair of the Fairfax County Redevelopment and Housing Authority, Melissa McKenna, joining us now. Thank you, Chairman McKay. I'm Melissa McKenna, Chair of the County's Redevelopment and Housing Authority. I am so proud to be joining you today from Ovation at Arrowbrook in Herndon, which will soon provide 274 affordable apartment homes. This is a great example of all Fairfax has done and continues to do to grow the supply of affordable housing. As Chairman McKay said, we currently have almost 4,000 affordable units built or on the way. Over the past two years, the Board of Supervisors has invested over $90 million to support its affordable housing goal. The county invests in new construction as well as preservation and maintenance of existing affordable housing units. Part of maintaining an affordable housing supply in Fairfax County is ensuring families can stay in their homes. Every day, our Housing Authority provides rental assistance to over 4,000 households. This includes assisting veterans in our community, providing housing so that families can be reunited or prevented from entering the foster care system, assisting individuals with a disability so they may live in the community of their choice, and much more. Fairfax County is not immune to the impacts of rising home values and rising rents and inflation. The pandemic truly showed the world how many of our neighbors are unfortunately living on the precipice of tragedy and without public support would face foreclosure and eviction. The rising cost of living in Fairfax County, along with the continued impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, underscore the need for affordable housing supports here. I am so proud to work with a stellar team of public servants at Fairfax County who are passionate about affordable housing. In addition to county staff, our community of nonprofits are helping make the ambitious affordable housing goal of 10,000 units by 2034, set by the Board of Supervisors, a reality. Thank you, Chairman McKay, for your leadership, and let's keep our foot on the gas. An individual's opportunities to succeed should not be predictable by the zip code they live in, color of their skin, disability, or socioeconomic status. As someone who grew up in the historic Route 1 corridor, this is a passion of mine. Here in Fairfax County, we know that there is no shortage of talent or ability. However, the opportunity to realize one's full potential isn't always afforded to everyone. That's why in 2017, the Board of Supervisors adopted 
the one Fairfax policy, mandating that every decision made by the county be centered around and made through an equitable lens. Of course, such a policy has undeniable economic benefits, which will make us more resilient when faced with significant challenges, such as a once in a century pandemic. Beyond that, however, such a policy is simply the right thing to do. County staff have taken one Fairfax to heart to continue to break down barriers that have existed in our county for too long. Next, you'll hear from Fairfax County's one Fairfax team on what these efforts have led to. Hello, I'm Carla Bruce. As the county's chief equity officer, I am excited for this opportunity to reflect back on 2022 and all the ways this year that Fairfax County has made progress toward our vision of becoming one Fairfax. We have deepened and extended our capacity to consider equity in planning and decision making, and the countywide strategic plan has been key to facilitating the strategic alignment of policy and practice across departments to further our efforts. For the first time, Department Equity Impact Plans are posted on the county website for public view, promoting more transparency and accountability. Also, equity impact statements are being included in items coming before the Board of Supervisors for their awareness and decision making. Our targeted investments in small businesses and in areas such as health, child care, workforce readiness, and affordable housing are connecting people to the opportunities they need to thrive in our community. Fairfax County recognizes that our ethnic, racial, and linguistic diversity is a key source of our strength. And in January 2022, we hired our first Director of Immigrant Community Affairs, Carol Escalante. Carol is actively building relationships with the community and is working hard to ensure full compliance with our county's trust policy. Thanks for joining us, Carol. Thank you, Carla. During this last year, it has been gratifying to work in a collaborative way with county staff, nonprofit organizations, community partners, and faith leaders that support our county's immigrant community. I am eager to keep working with them as we develop a comprehensive countywide plan for ensuring that Fairfax County is a welcoming community for immigrants with opportunities for integration, well being, and economic success. An indicator of a jurisdiction's success can be viewed by whether leaders are forward-thinking and invest in their future. As such, how a locality funds its public school system can go a long way in predicting its economic competitiveness and vitality for years to come. That's why I am proud that every year the Board of Supervisors transfers over 50% of the county's budget to Fairfax County Public Schools. As the father of two young FCPS students, I know it is imperative that Fairfax County continues to invest in education. It is in large part due to this commitment by the county that FCPS is the world-class school system that we have come to expect. Not only do these investments in our children pay off when they eventually enter the workforce, but it attracts high quality and high paying jobs to our county. I've been to countless ribbon cuttings of companies who chose to make Fairfax County home and it is without fail that the quality of FCPS played a significant role in why they moved their business here. As chair, I look forward to continuing to work with our partners on the school board, the superintendent, and FCPS staff in continuing this tradition of investing in our most valuable asset, our children. And now I'm happy to turn it over to FCPS Superintendent, Dr. Michelle Reed, to talk about all that's happening at Fairfax County Public Schools. Hello, I'm Michelle Reed, the Superintendent of Fairfax County Public Schools. Thank you, Chairman McKay, for inviting me to share a bit about FCPS, a premier school division rightly regarded as one of the best in the nation. Learning happens best in community, and I believe the strength of our schools lies in the strength of our community. Our success would not be possible without the strong partnership that we have with Fairfax County. Many of you may already know that I've spent my first few months hosting 28 Community Conversations, a series of engagement opportunities with our families, our students, staff, and the larger community. Through this listening and learning tour, I heard a great deal of pride in FCPS and our staff who make educational excellence a reality. 
I also had robust discussions regarding opportunities to build on our successes and continuing to forge mountaintop educational experiences for each and every one of our students. FCPS provides a number of opportunities for students to explore their passions through strong academics and career and technical education. Our activities are endless, ranging from fine and performing arts to athletics. If our students dream it, we are committed to helping them achieve it. FCPS continues to perform well above state, national, and global averages in SAT testing and on-time graduation rates. Our rate of academic recovery from the pandemic is outpacing Virginia as a whole, thanks to the hardworking educators that support our students every day. But Fairfax County Public Schools is about more than data. We are about people who are making a difference in our community. Learning happens best in community, and we appreciate the support of the Board of Supervisors and County staff, the leadership of our elected school board members, and the dedication of our staff. Currently, FCPS is in the midst of a strategic plan process, and we are engaging our entire community. In fact, we've received feedback from more than 100,000 students already. By the end of the school year, we will have a strategic plan that will guide the FCPS educational experience for the next several years. It is my sincerest wish and deepest commitment to you that when each student leaves Fairfax County Public Schools, together we will have given them the tools, resources, experiences, and opportunities needed for them to be able to both pursue and accomplish their unique life goals. Together, we must prepare our students now for a future yet to be imagined. Thank you for your trust and your partnership in supporting our amazing students. Together, all things are possible. Fairfax County is a global technology hub, a leader in innovation and inclusive economic growth, a proudly international community, and the economic engine of the Commonwealth of Virginia. We had a number of good news stories in 2022 that showed us we're on the right track and are prepared for continued growth in the years to come. I am grateful that federal resources helped us deliver assistance when our small businesses needed it the most. Our Fairfax RISE grant program distributed $52 million in relief to more than 4,800 diverse small businesses across the county. Our board created this program very early in the pandemic because we understood the lasting impact that extended closures could have. Looking to the future, we have created the $1 million Fairfax Founders Fund to grow innovative businesses and jobs. In service to the One Fairfax Equity Policy, the grants will go to a diverse set of businesses, including businesses in historically disadvantaged communities looking for early stage capital to grow in all parts of the county. Now I'd like to turn it over to my good friend, Victor Hoskins, head of the Fairfax County Economic Development Authority to offer his views on our regional economy. Thank you, Chairman McKay. It is indeed an exciting time to be in Fairfax County and in Northern Virginia. As we continue to recover from the global pandemic, I can say with all certainty that our economy is resilient and that we have emerged stronger than ever. Fairfax County is home to nine Fortune 500 headquarters, and we continue to announce new relocations, expansions, and decisions by major employers like Hilton Worldwide to stay and grow in Fairfax County. Time after time, businesses choose Fairfax County. But beyond the major headlines you see, an even greater story is being told. As Chairman McKay mentioned, our diverse small business community is continuing to grow. Fairfax County is home to more than 8,000 minority-owned employers, which is a third of all county businesses. And women-owned businesses account for one-fifth of the county's business base and employ more than 50,000 people. Fairfax County is the top location in the region for minority, women, and veteran-owned businesses. When we say our diversity is our strength, we truly mean it. This is the kind of regional profile that will attract the next wave of innovators and the next generation of talent needed to fill jobs and start new businesses right here in Fairfax County. Speaking of talent, we at the Fairfax County Economic Development Authority are fully committed to attracting and retaining the talent necessary for these positive economic trends to continue. At workinnorthernvirginia.com, we have collected all open jobs in Northern Virginia and a wide range of information and connections to help grow our workforce. 
we focus on promoting our region as a top destination for skilled talent at all levels of their careers, from people who are looking for the first job right out of college to those looking to change their careers. Fairfax County and Northern Virginia are full of high quality amenities, including award-winning parks, top-tier public schools, and unparalleled access to higher education opportunities. This makes our region one of the best places to live and work in the country. Together with our partner organizations, from government entities to nonprofits, we continue to help build the economy of the future to support this exceptional quality of life for generations to come. Thank you, Chairman McKay, for the opportunity to talk about Fairfax County's strong and resilient economy, our growing and diverse business community, and our collective role in helping build the next generation workforce. When it comes to public safety, Fairfax County is second to none. On the whole, we are the safest jurisdiction of our size in the nation. From our fire and rescue department to our police department and our emergency management office, surrounding jurisdictions and those nationwide turn to Fairfax County to learn from us as we continue to be on the leading edge of how we protect our community. Whether it's in conflict resolution training that fire department recruits receive, de-escalation training for police officers, or work with federal partners to assist with natural disaster responses globally with our incredible Virginia Task Force One Urban Search and Rescue Team, Fairfax County is a leader on this front as well as many more. While this is a point of pride for us, we of course still face challenges. This may be the most salient in the current vacancies within the police department. However, this is an issue that department leadership and the board have not shied away from. While police staffing is a problem regionally and nationally, FCPD has been proactive in the development of a plan in recruiting individuals to our world-class police department. The 30 by 30 goal to make 30% of our department women by 2030, the public safety cadet program and the hiring of experienced officers are just three examples of the robust efforts that FCPD leadership have undertaken on this front. Our ability to be forward thinking and proactive have contributed to our resiliency when faced with exceptional challenges. This has also been true for public safety and is why the board in 2015 adopted a resolution to support the National Stepping Up Initiative to decriminalize mental illness. This paved the way for our Diversion First programs, which continue to offer alternatives to incarceration for people with mental illness, co-occurring substance use disorders, and or developmental disabilities who come into contact with the criminal justice system for low-level offenses. The goal is to intervene whenever possible to provide assessment, treatment, and needed support. To date, there have been over 3,000 diversions from potential arrest. In recent years, on average, of those diverted to the Sharon Bulova Center in lieu of arrest, over 80% were not booked into the jail within one year. The benefits to the individual being served are clear, as are the benefits that such services provide to our community as a whole. For this reason, the board is investing $185 million over the next two years to fund the Fairfax Falls Church Community Services Board in continuing to serve our community. Daryl Washington, Executive Director of the CSB, will share more on that work that our dedicated staff carry out every day. Thank you, Chairman McKay. Diversion First is a multi-year effort undertaken by the county to be able to decriminalize mental health, substance use, and developmental disabilities and the services that individuals get. The goal is to steer individuals away from incarceration and getting them the care and the support they need in the community. Right now I'm standing in the Sharon Boulevard Center for Community Health and downstairs in this building we have law enforcement officers and mental health crisis intervention specialists working side by side to be able to provide the support, care, assessment, and intervention with individuals that are in the midst of the crisis and making sure to steer and point them in the direction that's going to get them back on the road to recovery 
and better health. One of the components of Diversion First is also getting support in the community, permanent supported housing, intensive case management services. This will allow individuals to be able to find a place to live and then also get the supports they need in the community. Looking ahead in 2023, we are really looking to continue to transform crisis intervention services here in the county. Right now, there's around 28 calls a day that come into the 911 call center that have some type of mental health issue going on. Almost 100% of those calls involve dispatch of a law enforcement officer. What we like to do is be able to steer a significant portion of those calls over to a crisis call center. That call center is up right now, and right now the 911 call center and crisis call center are working together to develop protocols for when those individuals can be transferred over and get crisis intervention services over the phone rather than having a police officer dispatch in, out into the community. So I think this is an opportunity to be able to significantly transform the services and the care people get in the community when they're calling 911, when the, either them or their loved one is in the midst of a mental health crisis. So I wanna thank you, Chairman Kay, for giving me an opportunity to talk about the version first and looking forward to these continued growth, growth of this important program here in the county. Back in November, we celebrated the opening of the final phase of the Silver Line. It took a remarkable coalition of partners from the public, private, and nonprofit sectors and decades of work to make this 60-year-old dream a reality, the positive impacts of which will be felt for decades to come. In Fairfax County, we opened three new metro stations, Herndon, Innovation Center, and Reston Town Center. I'm thrilled by what this transit expansion means for our county. More jobs, more housing, a better environment, and at the same time, fewer cars on the road, less congestion, and more walking and biking opportunities. It was not always easy, but major projects like this never are. I am so grateful that in Fairfax County, we view these kind of projects not as expenses, but as investments. The return on this investment will be felt beyond the Silver Line Corridor throughout Fairfax County. And because Fairfax County is the economic engine of Virginia, the entire Commonwealth will reap the economic benefits of the Silver Line. The development that is already happening along the corridor is remarkable and includes Class A office space, retail, and housing, and so much more is in the pipeline. Around our three stations will be thousands of affordable housing units bringing much needed transit oriented housing options to our residents in this part of the county. Transit oriented development is how Fairfax County can concentrate growth in areas that can support it to keep cars off the road and allow residents to get to and from jobs, school and recreation without dealing with traffic. As we are able to concentrate development at our new stations, we are achieving our environmental goals by removing single occupancy vehicles from the road, adding more electric vehicle charging stations, and growing our network of walking and cycling paths. The opening of phase two is not just a win for Fairfax County residents and businesses, but it preserves and protects the environment for future generations. Transit is providing significant benefits in other parts of the county as well. Richmond Highway will soon be home to the ONE, the first bus rapid transit system in Fairfax County. The ONE is a game changer, bringing over $1 billion in investment to South County. The system will include nine stations between the Huntington Metro Station and Fort Belvoir, linking our county's largest employer to Metro. Along the way, the one will connect major employment and shopping centers to residential communities along the highway, providing safe, fast, and affordable transit connections for residents. We are a couple years away, but this transformational project is incredibly exciting and will elevate this part of the county. I'm excited and proud of all we are able to do on transit in Fairfax County and look forward to growing our transportation network for the benefit of all Fairfax County residents. While the state of the county is a chance to reflect on all we've accomplished, 
This is an even better opportunity to look forward to all we can and will do in 2023 and beyond. Many of our goals remain the same, increasing our affordable housing stock, expanding services for our seniors, protecting vulnerable residents, growing our economy, protecting our environment, expanding transit, increasing pedestrian safety, improving our already world-class schools, and continuing to be the safest jurisdiction of our size in the country. But we will also work nonstop to shape and mold our government services to match a rapidly changing Fairfax County. The county relies on our multiple economic engines to power our world-class services. That is why the transformation of Route 1, the renovation of Greater Springfield, our rethinking of Seven Corners and Bailey's Crossroads, and the rebuilding of Merrifield and West Falls Church are critical. The silver line from Tyson's through Reston and Herndon and on to Dulles is something we can all be proud of. In each of these locations, I see not just remarkable economic and residential development, but cultural as well. With more than 200 languages spoken in our schools and with the vibrant multinational cultural centers established throughout the county, we are a welcoming place for people from all over the world, which makes me immensely proud. But the work to make all of Fairfax County a success is never over. We are not a success until everyone who lives here can also share in all we are accomplishing. We've dedicated ourselves every day to the increasing access to the services and programs that bridge any gaps between those who strive and the goals they are working towards. One of the remarkable parts of serving as chairman is traveling around the county and seeing firsthand the progress we've made. At every ribbon cutting for a new highway or metro station or business, or at every community meeting with residents having their say when it comes to land use or county operations, or when we meet the hundreds of dedicated community activists who come to the Board of Supervisors meetings for recognition or just to have their voices heard, I am infused with hope and optimism. It is this incredible engagement on every level, from nonprofit organizations to neighborhood associations to our thousands of local companies and businesses that makes our county what it is. When I talk to students, I see that amazing spark in their eyes, in the spirit, in their voices. The one that believes nothing is impossible. That your only limit is how far your imagination can take you. I tell them to dream big, very big. We know that the future is bright here in Fairfax County and our state of the county is strong, united, and determined. I look forward to continuing down this path with you. Thank you and a very happy and healthy new year to you all.